Chuck, my work here is finished. I've destroyed most of the files that might tie you into this, so you should be okay. I felt I owed it to you as a friend. I also thought I'd leave you this parting gift, which should explain a few things. There's enough money left for your pension, and I've taken the liberty of procuring a few million for my early retirement. Why? I deserve it. I'm the golden boy who knew how to play the market and give you and the board members one hell of a profit. For a while, at least. So by the time you hear this, I should be living the lifestyle of the rich and infamous. Don't worry about me. I won't end up like Milken or Boski or any of the other insiders who traded in their luxury homes for a suite of club fed. I'm Doug Shelton, Wall Street wizard. Besides, I'm too smart to get caught. Hey, Chuck, when you move on to another company, remember one thing. You guys made it too easy for me. Nobody understood derivatives. Not you, not the board, not even the auditors could figure them out. But as long as everyone was making money, nobody asked any questions. Okay. It's confession time. I didn't plan to bankrupt Harrison Investments. Truth is, there were no controls. Nobody was looking over my shoulder. Okay, so I've got 300,000 shares in Mercer Manufacturing and a quarter million in Unitex. Where does that leave me? You still have a million shares in one pharmaceutical, but it's been looking a little shaky. Then put a half a million in Pulsar, and if Warren starts to take a dive, trade it all over. Everything? You got it. Okay, Doug, I've still got a few minutes. Oh, hey, did you hear the good news? Would that be that I earned this company 214 million last quarter? Oh, so what's a few hundred thousand dollars? Close enough. Hey, Steve, I gotta go. I'll catch you later. See ya. <clears throat> Roger. So, Wonder Boy, have you heard? What's that? <laughs> More than 200 million in a single quarter. Not a bad batting average, kid. You know, you got a lot of brass. When I started in this business, half a million seemed like a fortune. Not anymore. No, not anymore. Unless it's in your own pocket. Sure. In your own pocket. Half a million dollars. Doug, you dumbass, don't you get it? When Chuck saw this report, he called from Dallas and told me to give you a half million dollar bonus. Whoa. What? $500,000. And that's not all. Add to that your stock options and your commissions, and you could clear a cool million this year. Welcome to the oh big league, God. pal. Roger, that's great. Thank you. Well, hey, Thank hey. You. Don't suck up to me. Save it for Chuck. <laughs> Only the CEO can hand out bonuses like that. So what did he say? I mean, how he did said, he... I don't know what he's doing or how he's doing it, but tell him to keep it up. He said that. Word for word. He also said, stay focused and keep making profits. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Half a million dollars, that's $500,000. That's right. Hey, market's closed. You ready for a drink? Yeah, you're buying, right? Maybe that's how it started. Keep doing what I was doing. Keep making those profits. You have no idea how hard I worked for you. I worked longer and harder than I ever worked in my life. Then again, I liked making money. Wearing designer clothes, dating classy women. Almost as much as I love driving my new Jag. Now that's something you can't afford on a junior trader salary. So I kept looking for new places to make profits. Sure, most worked, 
at least enough to offset the ones that didn't, but looking back, there were some places I never should have gone. So we're all agreed. We make an offer for Laura Mac. With the profits generated by Doug's department alone, we can offer 400 million and still have 300 million in reserves. Doug? That's right, Mr. Bristol. It's a hell of a lot of money. You're damn right. <laughs> and we got it. <laughs> Look, are we ready to take that kind of risk? Now, seriously, how long can we expect Sheldon's department to keep generating 15% when every other department is giving us about 7? Before you got here, your department gave us about 8%. Now it's 15 How do you do it? I suppose I should have explained this earlier. I was just a little too busy building up a billion dollars in profits. So. <laughs> James, it's fairly simple. The reason I'm making these profits is because other departments aren't dealing in derivatives. Derivatives? Right. This is how it works. I put my money, uh, <laughs> our money, in the stock index futures. Now, this allows me to take advantage of small price fluctuations between New York and Tokyo. This way, we consistently make small profits due to the fact that there will always be some small price differences between America and Japan. Now, that's the fuel that keeps us going. But where do the big profits come in? They show up when I straddle futures options. Now, don't be scared by the term. It's really quite easy. Now, apparently no one else has noticed this, but over the past 20 years, the market has never risen or dropped more than 200 points in five days. All right, so now we're backed up by historical facts. What this means is that we can safely predict that the market will stay within these parameters. Our investments rely on this. And since there are only two outcomes, we can double our money every time we invest. All we have to do is invest a little and we make a lot. Easy enough? But what if it does drop more than 200 points? It hasn't. It won't. Roger. But what if it does? Carolyn, there's a fail-safe plan. Even after investing in Lower Mac, we still have $300 million in reserves. And that's not even counting the 7% being generated by other departments each quarter. So every 90 days, we have a golden parachute that protects us in the rare event that the market should drop more than 200 points in five days. And if it does, we just weather the storm, build up our assets, and start again. Oh, I get it. We all get it, James. <laughs> Hell, I have got more investors wanting a piece of this company right now because we're making money. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, I like the direction this company is going. And because he knows how to turn those derivatives into cash, I think we should give Doug Boy a promotion. <laughs> I'd like to see him in charge of all trading functions and front office operations. Is a vote really necessary? Guess not. Congratulations, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it was amazing. Not only did the promotion give my ego a boost, it also gave me the motivation to prove that the board was right in backing me up. For the next year, I gave Harrison Investments record profits. By the time you invited me out for a round of golf, I really needed the break. I was hoping we could talk about something other than business. I didn't expect the added pressure. Yes. <laughs> oh, T, sand, water, water, water. Yeah, put me down for three. <laughs> oh, it's good to get away from the office for a while, eh, Doug boy? Hey, don't stop thinking about it too long. There is always some bastard nipping at your heels. <laughs> Always. All right. Now, we got Laura Mac under our belts. But the Sinclair Finance deal wraps up next week. Time to think about the future. I've been watching the McManus Group in Houston. Now, I think they've gotten about as big as they're going to get. But that's plenty big. I have a source that says they might be open to an offer. What kind of offer? Say quarter billion? I don't think we're ready. If the Sinclair closes, we'll be short. But if we, um, by December, we should have that money to play around no, with. No, no, December's too late. We gotta move by August. August? That's just four months away. How important is this deal? They don't get more important than this. Oh, 
Okay, it's possible, it's possible, I think. All right. A few things have to be in place. Henderson is still supervising the back office. Chuck, he just turned 63. Give the guy a few hundred grand, a gold watch, and cut him loose. And replace him with who? Oh, well, no, I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, look, the auditors are always griping about segregation of duties, the company policy. Fine, do what you want, but remember this. I've earned this company nearly $10 billion just by working the front office. Put me in charge of both offices and I'll double it. Of course, if you think Henderson can get you the money you need from McManus. Look, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... What's two times 10 billion? Look, I'm just saying... Congratulations on your promotion. <laughs> Chuck, old man, that was a fatal blow. Finance 101. There were no checks and balances, no controls. I wanted more power, you wanted more money. Simple as that. You made the decision to put me in charge but I learned something from that experience. I learned that when things got rough, all I had to do was create a few new accounts to tide us over. I only expected they'd be in the system long enough to cover some losses when the market took a hit last June. Sort of like overdraft protection. It turned out to be pretty easy, actually. A few fake account numbers, a few names and addresses, and all of a sudden, an entire investment group was throwing money at us. Doug, I need to get the Jordan files back. They've been on my case about getting that report done. Yeah, hold on, hold on. They were right here. I know, they were right here. Oh, geez, I was supposed to hear from Lee about the bank. What tonight? I'm gonna check my email. No, um... What? Hey, uh, don't worry, I'll save your files, all right? Damn. Now I know why you're called the golden boy. You got twice the amount of investments as my department. I wish I could do that. Maybe I'd be driving a jack, huh? You gotta work for it, my friend. <laughs> Are you serious? I have been working hard. No, no. The trick is you don't work harder. You work smarter. What's the total? 1.9, Bill. Burn that number into your memory, Kevin. Make that your target. And someday maybe you'll pull up in a jack. Yeah, maybe. I wish I knew your secret. Chuck, tell Kevin my secret was in Series 3500. These were the accounts that added more than a billion to my investments, which I had planned to turn into real money as soon as the market reached 2000 again. Remember when I explained derivatives only had two outcomes? It's like roulette. I had bet on black, but I got red. So I lost a little. But it wasn't time to stop. It was time to double down and bet on black again and get my money back. As long as I had Harrison Investments $30 billion on my side, I could have kept investing until the market turned. But you know what the biggest problem was? I had completely forgotten about the scheduled audit last week. <laughs> Maybe I should have invested in a better organizer. John, Diane, have a seat. You two did a great job auditing the fleet management division. You work well together. Thanks. Thank you. So, are you ready for your next assignment? You bet. <laughs> We're conducting an audit of strategic trading. There's been a substantial bump in returns. Historically, this desk has been earning nearly 8%, about what most departments are doing now. But this Doug Shelton has been making nearly 15%. How's he doing that? Derivatives, futures options. It sounds risky, but he's been at it for over two years. Do you understand futures? Yes, somewhat. Not enough. Well, you've got till Monday to learn. But be careful how you approach this. He's pretty well connected. Management loves him. So get in and out as soon as possible. Hey, for all I know, this guy could be a financial genius. But keep your eyes open. Mr. Shelton, the auditors are here for their appointment. Send them in. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Hello. Diane, I assume? Yes. John? John, yes. Come in, have a seat. Thanks. Thank you. So, how was your flight? It was fine, no delays. And we found the hotel, so we're all set. Well, I know you got a lot of work ahead of you, so tell you what, just so we get off on the right foot, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. 
I'm robbing the company blind. <laughs> Seriously, <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. See, my desk has been generating some monster profits for the company, and I need someone to make sure that every last person in my department is doing exactly what they should. That means staying on the level. So, anything you need, just ask. Shoot. Well, obviously, we'll need to see trading policies and guidelines, uh, trading blotters, position statements, outstanding activities lists. Um, Plus general ledger printouts, risk management reports, and any mandates from management. Well, I play golf with Chuck Bristol. That seems like a mandate to me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Karen, give my friends whatever they need and set up the conference room. I'm going to suggest something. Just so you're not set off on any wild goose chase by any of the staffers, why don't you come to me when there's anything you need, all right? Fair enough? Great. Happy hunting. Mm, this guy sure is making some money. I'll say. He's outperformed every department since 1989. No wonder they're paying him a half a million dollars. Well, that's nothing compared to these profits. I mean, look at this. The Series 2000 accounts are making 800 million. The Series 3000 is more than 750 million. Page two, line 12, the Series 4000 wait, account. Wait, wait, you skipped Series 3500. Series what? 3500. Oh. Well, now, why would they skip my thousands and then there's a 3,500? And there's more than 900 million in it. Everything going all right? Oh, good so far. Yeah, we were just saying you really mm. earn your keep. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Say, I don't want to sound too forward, but I'm having a few friends over this Saturday to try out my new boat. And if you two want to come by, be part of the crew. Uh, great. Sounds good. All right, I'll drop some maps and have them ready for you by the time you're finished. I guess you're almost done here, right? Uh, actually, we've got a ways to go. Uh, but maybe you could help us out with the uh, Series 3500 investments. Uh, they tend to jump right out at us. Um, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. Those are, those are funds set aside for the purchase of the McManus Group. It's Chuck Bristol's idea. So the CEO knows about them? Knows about them. Hell, he's the one who authorized me to open up the account, but hey, if there's a problem, I can get him on the phone. He's in San Francisco meeting with their reps, but I'm sure he won't mind being disturbed so you can question him. I don't want to question him. We'll just check on it later. Fine. Yeah, Chuck's had his eye on McManus for a few months now, and he authorized me to keep the funds in a safe place. Chuck's a real sharp guy. He's taught me a lot. Now, who's going to argue with the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company? Um, as long as you have his approval, then I'm sure it's okay. Uh, thanks, Doug. Uh, we'll get these files back to you later. No rush. Take your time. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the figures seem right. The company's not losing any money. But these accounts are almost exclusively in futures. I mean, what CEO would authorize investments like these? I mean, from what I've read, futures are a crapshoot. Well, Doug said the CEO authorized the investments for the purchase of the McManus Group. Yeah, that's what he said, but I remember Business Week reporting that McManus is worth only about a quarter of a billion. I mean, why is he holding on to this many derivatives? It, it doesn't make sense. Doug, uh, here's your files back. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot. Thank you, and here are some maps to my place. Oh. Saturday, 10 o'clock. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, Doug, look, I... Uh, I still have a few questions about the Series 3500. Look, I've already explained it to you. What part didn't you understand? The buyout of McManus that Chuck approved the fund? What? Well, it just seems like a large amount to put into futures. I mean, especially for a company that size. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's, it's been a long day. Tell you what. <clears throat> when you come in tomorrow, I'll take you to some folks who know this stuff a whole lot better than me. Ken Smothers and Shelley Hart in accounting, they keep tabs on all this stuff. I just buy it and wait for the returns, you know? But um, they'll give you more information than you know what to do with. That'll give you an idea of how we've handled our investments over the years, maybe clear a few things up. I'm sure it will. Hey, Doug, I hate to sound like I'm coming down on your department. It's just, I want to feel good about my report. No sweat. Check with accounting, they'll get you started. 
Yeah, um, see you tomorrow. All right. I knew the accounting department would slow them down long enough for me to fix things. Ha. Huh. Then I would have been home free. The market was on its way up and I was a few days away from recouping the shortage. <sighs> then I guess you could say the winds of change blew my way. The president is expected to sign that bill into law. Less than a week after Hurricane Andrew left behind a 20-mile path of destruction in South Florida, shockwaves are being felt on Wall Street. The Dow has dropped 212 points in the last four days. The biggest drop in... 212 points. Damn it! I'm down two billion. Okay, calm down. Calm down. All right, you bet I'm black and you lose. What do you do? What do you do? You double down and you bet I'm black again. Roger, Doug. Yeah? Hey, I, I've got a lead on some options that are guaranteed to hit, but um, my available funds are tied up. So I need you to transfer me 100 million from Series 3000. Series 3000? Right. This is sure thing? Guaranteed, man, 100%. You got it, my man. Thanks, partner. Steve, Doug. Hi, Doug. In about one hour, I want you to put 100 million on S&P 500. Uh -huh. Are you sure that's all? Hey, did I ask your advice? Well, well, no. Did I? No. Then just do it. Okay, fine. 100 million. I don't understand it. It seems above board. I mean, there are no major losses, and most departments show steady growth. Except for Shelton's. Yeah, his department's like a steamroller. But that's what his business is supposed to do, uh, make money. But I still have questions about Series 3500. What's Series 3500? It's a special investment fund that Shelton says is set up to purchase the McManus Group. Yeah, it's on page seven there. The thing is, there's almost a billion dollars in the fund, and most of it's in futures. That's a lot of money in a risky investment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when the company is only worth a quarter of a billion. Well, did you ask Shelton about it? Sure. He said it was Chuck Bristol's call. Well, did you talk to Bristol? Uh, no, he was out of town. I, I did talk to two accountants, though, and they said that both Bristol and the board pretty much gave Shelton free reign to run his own show. They didn't seem to know much about it. When does Bristol get back? He was in San Francisco. What's today, Thursday? Mm -hmm. I think today. Do you feel curious enough to pay him a call and get some straight answers? I thought we were getting straight answers. What does your gut tell you? That something's going on. Right. Well, we've got to get together with Bristol. I'll give a call and set up a meeting tomorrow. I tried, Chuck. I really did. Thought I could pump a little more cash in there and get it back, but things didn't quite work out. I'm fairly certain my coworkers will be watching the fallout of this natural disaster with a high degree of interest. So I'm fairly certain they'll be calling on me very soon. Construction. Five days after Hurricane Andrew hit, its physical damage is mirrored in the fiscal damage of one of Wall Street's most secure companies. Harrison Investments has lost more than $2 billion in a single day. Who was supposed to be watching Sheldon? Damn it, I knew Chuck gave him too much power. Shut up, Roger. I brought this up over a year ago. You wouldn't listen either. Nobody would listen. Nobody listened, Chuck. They took the money and they stopped listening. They stopped watching. Unfortunately, it's too late to save the company, and if you're listening to this, I imagine it's too late to stop me. By the way, I have a cousin in Florida who writes great job resumes, so if any of the board members need help finding work, just mention my name and I'm sure he'll give them a great discount. Take care. Bye. You were right, James. Marge, get the police.
Good morning, sir. Bally, please, one way. Would that be cash or credit? I believe I have the adequate funds. What the hell? Thank you.